prudence to ensure that the revenues we project are as realistic as possible, as close to what the reality is as possible, Honorable Speaker. And uh, we must also take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to call on the Kenya Revenue Authority to pull up their socks, Honorable Speaker, to make sure that we are collecting adequate revenues to ensure that we do not keep revising our budgets through <coughs> these supplementary budgets. Honorable Speaker, let me also note uh, some good progress. Uh, as members will note, we have spoken, Honorable Speaker, at length about how we budget, our, how transparent our budgeting process is. And I must commend the Budget and Appropriations Committee because this time round, they have been very transparent in attaching the schedule. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the schedules that you members will find attached from page, uh, page 757, or rather the uh, first, all the way from the first to the fourth schedule, Honorable Speaker, including the changes that have been made. And Honorable Speaker, this is very good because it allows members to interrogate what are the changes that have been made by the Budget and Appropriations Committee so that we avoid the temptation that I've always seen over the years to blame the Budget and Appropriations Committee members that they have reallocated money from here to there without the knowledge of the House. I have seen also members accusing each other Honorable Speaker, because I have been part of those members who have been on the receiving end. I saw the member for Yata the other day, ignorantly speaking on TV, saying how much money that was allocated to Kiambu County and was all diverted to Kikonswensi. And I wondered, this is a member who sits in this house, budgets, appropriates, is always in this house. Where was he when that money was being reallocated? Because it is not possible for one member of this house to reallocate resources from one or the other constituency to another. It is not possible. These changes are usually in these schedules, and that's why I thank the Chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee because of the disclosures that you are making so that even as we speak on TV stations, let us not be, appear on TV to exhibit our ignorance of the budgeting process. And it's good that every new parliament, members of parliament, are taken through the budgeting process of the House. And I think the sh the, the, from the schedules I was looking at the, at the induction of this House, we had at least three and a half hours an induction program. And I want to encourage the Chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, please keep educating members, even as you speak to them, as you engage with them, even through the committees, on how the budgeting process is done, Honorable Speaker, uh, so that even as we speak out there, we speak from a point of knowledge, and not just speak because we, have, we, are, we are riding on things that are circulated on social media or what you think uh, will give you popularity in your village by mentioning other people's names. As I saw the member for Hatta mentioning my name on TV. And I forgave him because I knew he has, he has to mention my name to look relevant to his people. Anyway, Honorable Speaker, moving on from these schedules, there are a number of uh, changes, Honorable Speaker, that are critical as the uh, chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee has mentioned. Issues touching on Article 223, again, Honorable Speaker, we did indicate that Article 223, and it has been the, uh, the, the position of this House, Article 223 is only to be used in cases of uh, emergency nature. Honorable Speaker, 223 is not to be used to allocate money to the office of the leader of majority for T, because that is not an emergency. But the emergency that has, we have faced as a country with the flooding, it is good, Honorable Speaker, that we are seeing more resources going towards mitigation of the, the issues that came with flooding, uh, right from the monies that are being paid to people who are being moved from uh, uh, riparian uh, reserves uh, within the city and in other areas where people have been asked to move away from rivers and areas where they are prone to flooding and other dangers, Honorable Speaker. And money has been put to ensure uh, that these people are well compensated. I am glad and I must thank the Ministry of Interior that for the first time, even as we've seen houses being demolished in Nairobi, all the people who are living in those houses, Honorable Speaker, and I did see a statement from the Ministry of Interior confirming that they have compensated those people to ensure that they are able to relocate and move away from areas that would subject them to dangers or flooding 
and uh, all the issues we see with climate change, Honorable Speaker. And this is the way to go, so that you do not just tell people move out and they do not where to go to.